Hey everyone, what's up? This is uh, Drew Douglas and in for themeforest.net and today we're going to go over day 7 of WordPress for designers. And if you were here with us on day 6, you'll recall that we got um, got our got the first part of our sidebar uh, widget ready um, and today we're going to cover how to how to finish that and get it completely ready for any widgets the user wants to uh, to add to their blog and uh, we also covered in day six our single.php file and uh, kind of on the opposite side of that we're going to go over our page.php file which is going to allow us to uh, to format our static pages we're also going to just go over some other cool little tricks and uh, fun stuff we can do with other template tags that we haven't really gotten into and uh, edit some of our older files and, and, and update them with some cool stuff so uh, I know a lot of you are uh, ready to get to the PSD and I promise you we will get there shortly but we still have some fundamentals uh, to go over for the next few days so let's go ahead and uh, get started uh, you should go ahead and already have your you know your local server running or or whatever uh, you're running WordPress on right now and your text editor of choice and uh, go ahead and open up sidebar.php and uh, the other day in the comments, I, uh, a user, I believe, asked that or you know requested that we add a, a login link uh, somewhere on our page so you could just click uh, login or log out um, as opposed to going to the URL bar and typing in wp-admin. And that's actually a pretty good suggestion and that's really easy to do. So let's add a little login link to the bottom of our, uh, of our sidebar.php. Just under, uh, under where we have our categories, which is wp list categories just add an unordered list and some list tags and then some PHP tags and inside the PHP tags we'll just do WP for WordPress underscore log in out all one word log in out save that we'll go over to Firefox and we, sh we expect it to show up right here and there we see a little log out link since we're already logged in. You know, of course, you could come over here and make your own. You know, log in, log out, user section, and, and we can get a lot more advanced with that, which we might do down the road if if time permits. Uh, but the, but that uh, to whoever asked is how you uh, put the log in and log out link. It's just the uh, WordPress template tag WP login out. So that said, um, you'll you'll also remember that uh, we we got our the first part of our sidebar uh, widget ready. We said let's widgetize it up in here, and uh, we used a little PHP and we said uh, with a conditional statement we said if the function dynamic sidebar does not exist, then display this code below. So now what we need to do is set up what's known as a functions.php file, which gets a little advanced. So we'll just take it slow and. We pretty much need to, to register our sidebar and, and tell WordPress how to style um, the widgets when they're added by the user. So we'll go ahead and create a new file. And we will name this file functions.php. Go ahead and open up functions.php. And if you didn't guess, we'll be working with PHP for the moment. So we'll use some PHP tags. And now we'll use a conditional statement again. We'll say if function exists, register sidebar in between quotes. Then we want to do something in between um, the brackets here. So now what we'll do is we'll say register sidebar. And then we'll say inside of that we're going to need an array of values. So we'll declare array. We'll kind of open that up so we can format it better. And now we're going to tell WordPress how to format the widgets uh, using keys and values. And you'll see what I mean like so. When we type some quotations here and we'll say before underscore widget. And then, uh, we'll point to uh, our value. We're going to just, you know, for now we'll just open up a, a list tag, comma, after widget, 
we'll close our list tag. Oops. Now we'll say before title. Same thing, we'll just use some H2 tags this time. And after title. And we'll close our H2 tags. We'll save that. And now we've now what we've done is we've finally gotten our sidebar ready to handle either widgets or just regular code if if uh, the user is not using any widgets. And to give you an example of what what that means, um, we'll go ahead and go to the to the WP admin panel here. All right, and we'll go down to appearance, which is in the sidebar of your admin panel, and you'll click widgets. Now this is where the user can uh, add and edit um, any kind of widgets that they like really. And um, you'll remember that we said if, in our sidebar we said if there is not a dynamic sidebar, which means you know if there are no widgets go ahead and display this. Well what if there are? Well let's add a, let's say they add a calendar. And you'll see that calendar has been added over here. And we'll click save changes. Okay, changes saved. So we'll open up our site again. Okay, now you'll see our sidebar has turned into just uh, a widget um, sidebar, and they could continue adding different widgets um, down here as many as they liked. So that is getting a uh, a basic theme widget ready, which a lot of uh, users really request, and it, it's a good thing um, to do for them. You know, as it, as it gives them a, a choice, and especially people that aren't very uh, you know, tech savvy, they can just come over here and click a few buttons depending on what they need and uh, really do a lot with this. But let's go ahead and remove the, the widgets for now, now that we, we know it's worked. Oops. And we'll come back here and refresh. Uh, refresh again. Well, I thought I uh, disabled the widgets. Maybe not. I guess I did not. Uh, we'll click remove and then save changes and that should yeah, put our old sidebar back in place. There we go. So that is how um, how to get a theme widget ready, which is a big part of WordPress development. So you'll remember that you'll you go into the sidebar and you give it the if the function does not exist for dynamic sidebar. You know, then we have make sure you have your in diff statement at the bottom. Then you make your PHP uh, your functions.php file and you add the uh, the PHP we just added. And we're gonna when we get into more um, you know, days down the road, we'll we'll discuss functions at PHP more and and get more in depth. But I don't want to overwhelm you guys um, all at once here for those that might you know be new to this. So let's move on uh, now that we got our sidebar widget ready, and you'll remember in day six that we learned how to um, how to format these individual articles, our individual blog posts that we make. You know we. We added the date um, for them and some tags below to show up and a little promotion at the end of our individual articles that encourages them to subscribe to our RSS feed. Um, but we haven't formatted our single pages right now. Um, right now they're just falling back on the default template hierarchy. So uh, we'll go ahead and do that and you've probably guessed that we're going to need what's known as a page.php file and it's obviously called a page.php file because this will be what styles our individual static pages and uh, this is how we can control uh, what goes on in them so think back to day six because it will be very similar to creating our single.php file except we can do you know all kinds of different things now that it's that it's a page instead so we'll do some php tags and the first thing we're gonna grab is our header and we'll grab our sidebar so I'm floating it before the content right now for uh, just for our default theme okay and now we'll go down and you know we'll give it just a div class of anything you want doesn't matter static static page just try to be descriptive with your class and ID names and then we're gonna go through the loop again and hopefully you were um, you were tuning in for when we went over the loop. Uh, I want to say day four if you haven't seen it, but I'm not um, off the top of my head. I can't remember what day that was. But um, if you haven't seen the the screencast where we go over the loop, go ahead and do that um, before now 
because that's what we're going to do. So we'll do if have posts while have posts the post. Okay, so we set up the first part of our loop and next you probably guess that we're going to display the title should probably be the first thing on our uh, page let them know what we're talking about PHP the title which is a uh, WordPress template uh, tag that we can use to display the title of the page that we're on and then we'll uh, continue on here we'll add another a div class to for in the future if we want to style this more um, let's call it static content alright and inside of that we will just post our content so our actual page using the content okay we can go ahead and save that and we'll come down here and we'll end our while since we have our while loop going we need to end that and we'll give it an else statement and in case for some reason there isn't a, um, a page to display um, something you know didn't go right or for whatever reason we'll we'll give a user friendly message page not found you know um, and then we'll just give them a search bar And we can do this saying, you know, get search. Oops, sorry, that needs to be in PHP tags. Get search form. And then, of course, we need to end our if statement. So we'll do PHP end if. Go ahead and save that we need to still add our footer um, I know off top we need to clear it real quick so I'll just add a quick uh, clear class to clear our float there's other ways you could do that but you know we're not worried about uh, that too much right now and we'll grab our footer okay so we have our basic page.php set up and let's go through that again First we open up our page and we grab our header using get header which grabs our header.php file. We use get sidebar which grabs our sidebar.php file. And then we declare uh, our div class of static page and we go through the WordPress loop. And, and in case you need a refresher it, it's, pr it's a conditional comment in PHP and if uh, there are any pages or posts to display we're displaying them using the content in between PHP tags or else you know we'll just grab the search form and and show an error um, and, that, and that is that's different than a 404 that's um, it's, it's a little different than that and uh, and then we'll grab our footer with PHP get footer and that's a, that's a real um, basic page.php that we have set up so far so we can go ahead first and check to see if it worked well it looks like it did or you know footers clearing to the bottom and but how would we really know if we don't add, you know, something we haven't added before since our, we don't, you know, we don't, we don't really have a design going right now. So let's add something so, you know, we can really um, see that our page.php is showing up. Why don't we add a, uh, a link that will allow us to edit the current page uh, only if we are logged in as an admin or someone who has privileges to edit that page. It's pretty convenient, so in case you're browsing a, a page of, of your website and you find uh, a typo or you know an, an error of some kind, you can just uh, click you know the edit this page link that we'll set up, and uh, you'll be able to just log straight into the edit um, page link. So underneath our div class of static content, we'll open up some PHP tags, and then we're going to use a WordPress template tag called edit post link and all of those are separated by underscores which you can hopefully see okay we're gonna pass this uh, three parameters first we're gonna say edit this page dot 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 comma two more quotes then we're gonna wrap it in strong tags one more comma and close our strong tag 
and we'll save that. And what this, what Edit Post Link does, is it grabs the uh, the current uh, page or post you're on, and it allows you to, um, if you're logged in only as a, as a, a person with privileges that's allowed to, it's going to let you send you straight um, to the admin panel and allow you to edit that particular page. So it can really save some time if you're trying to fix some typos or you notice a quick error and you don't want to. Uh, you know, type in or go to WP Admin and navigate to that certain page, especially if you have a lot of um, pages published. So we'll come over here and we'll refresh. Okay, and we can see edit this page. So if we click that, all of a sudden we've been brought to the about edit page and we can make any quick edits, you know, um, comment changes and uh, update the page as needed. Which is a pretty, uh, pretty uh, neat feature, and you'll see that that's been added now to all of our pages on our page.php file. And we'll get a little more uh, into the edit post link here. Um, and let's go ahead and now that you know how to uh, create and style your uh, individual pages, let's just have some fun for um, for the rest of this with our header and our single.php file, which are which are some files that. We um, we've been messing with in a couple earlier days, a couple days ago. So um, let's stick on what we were doing and let's go to our single.php file first. And this, if you forgot, the single.php file is the file that is um, formatting all of our individual blog posts and articles when someone actually clicks on the article to read the um, the full article. And uh, let's after the tags. Let's do another edit post link. And this time we can say edit this post. And uh, you know, wrap it in paragraph tags this time just just to spice things up a little bit. You could wrap it in strong tags if you like. It doesn't matter. This is uh, just for demonstration. And we'll save it. And now if we go back home and then click on an actual individual post, um, you know, about the horrible story about Patty Mayonnaise, and we scroll down, we can see that uh, we, we have the admin um, edit this post link since we're logged in. And if we click edit this post, we are brought immediately to that post, um, which is really, really convenient, um, especially if you're... If you're designing themes for Theme Forest or a client or you know WordPress theme um, for someone else to use, make sure you include those um, the edit post links because it'll just save people a lot of time and uh, a lot of questions too. If it's a client of yours on on how do they edit a post and stuff, if you just put it there for them to have. So I would I recommend uh, definitely doing that. And uh, the last thing I wanted to go over uh, today is a cool little trick with our header and our title tags. That, that um, right now we'll notice that you know our title is testing WordPress Forest because that's the name of our our blog, and we're we're grabbing that using blog info name, which is good because it's not you know hardcore, it's not a hard coded um, you know title, but we're still pulling the same title every time. Like if we click on an individual post, um, we'll still see testing. WordPress Forest. You know, we click on my new AOL tattoo. It it's just says testing WordPress Forest. It would be nice if the title tags would say, you know, the name of our blog and the name of whatever you know post we happen to be on. And we're gonna we're gonna get a little fancy and do that right now. And it's actually pretty easy. Let's go ahead and get rid of everything in between the title tags. And we'll do PHP as always. Hopefully you're getting to like PHP by now. Um, if not, if not, you might you know want to want to start liking it because we're going to be using a lot more of it. And we're going to do blog info again, and we'll still use name. We're going to do something different after this. After blog info name, we're just going to just to keep this separated. We're going to open up some other PHP tags. So you can see what's going on here. We're going to do WP title, and in between the title tags, we're going to add a separator. So we're going to uh, have the the name of our blog show up, and then a separator, and then the title of our post. So you know we could do something like, you know, some little or separators, or you know just a dash. But uh, for now, let's just you know use two little or separators as I call them. Um, 
and save that. And we'll uh, refresh here, and then we'll just uh, let's click on. You know, we we don't ever go to this post. So why White Snake is is Tay best? And if we look at the title, we'll see testing WordPress Forest, and then our separator that we gave it, and then why White Snake is you know the most awesome you know band ever. Um, but if we go back to our home page, it automatically knows that it, well if there's no um, title of a post to display then it's just going to fall back on our, our our blog info name only so we're not just going to get a you know a separator spit out here you know for no reason which is nice so if we go to our about page you know we can see about shows up now and that really gives us some good um, SEO practices and you know just makes it more easy for users when they can uh, look up at the title and and know where they're at so I think we're going to stop there today um, I think that's good I don't want to overload anybody I know a couple people have asked about um, getting into the comments, and we're going to get into adding some comments um, soon enough, probably uh, to m for the next day, for uh, day eight, maybe day nine, because um, the comments can get kind of advanced. A lot of uh, conditional statements needed, and um, can get pretty in depth. But we will, you know, definitely um, hold out if you're waiting for the comments, because we will get to those soon. And as always, I. Uh, I recommend that you uh, check out the themeforest.net uh, website and subscribe to the blog. Um, if you're enjoying the series, you can click on blog.themeforest and subscribe by, by clicking the RSF uh, subscribe button. So I will see all of you for day eight. Uh, you know, happy WordPress coding and have a great day.